That was not good. On June 27, 2024, Joe Biden had probably the worst presidential debate performance of all time, and I was there cringing through it live. So what does this say about each candidate's ability to serve as president? Not much. Going into the presidential debate, I honestly thought Biden would do well. He did better than I expected in the 2020 debates. Will you Who shut is up, your, man? Listen. The fact is that everything he's saying so far is simply a lie. I'm not here to call out his lies. Everybody knows he's a liar. But you I just agree. want to make sure. Joe, you're the liar. I, 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 I want to make sure. You graduated last in your class, I, not I, first in your I, class. <laughs> God. I want to make Mr. sure. Mr. President, can you let him finish, sir? No, he doesn't know how to do that. He has, You'd you know, you, you picked be surprised. the Go wrong ahead, guy, oh, the wrong oh, night oh. at the wrong time. Listen, that was really a pr productive segment, wasn't it? Certainly he wasn't as forceful as Trump or even himself from years past, but he had some wits about him. Then again, in the State of the Union address just a few months ago, he did fine. Folks at home, does anybody really think the tax code is fair? No! Do you really think the wealthy and big corporations need another two trillion dollar tax break? No! I sure don't. Well, my predecessor and many in this chamber want to take this prescription drug away by repealing the Affordable Care Act. I'm not going to let that happen. And yet, expectations going into the debate remained in the basement, and I was expecting him to clear them as he always did. Instead, we got this guy. Making sure that we're able to make every single solitary person eligible for what I've been able to do with the uh, with, with, with the COVID, excuse me, with um, dealing with everything we have to do with. Uh, look, if we finally beat Medicare. Thank you, President uh, Biden. President Trump. Well, he's right. He did beat Medicare. He beat it to death. And I'm going to continue to move until we get the total ban on the, 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 the total initiative relative to what we're going to do with more Border Patrol and more asylum officers. President Trump? Uh, I really don't know what he said at the end of that sentence. I don't think he knows what he said either. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, not good. No, really. Go back, rewind the video, get off two times speed, and watch it again. We finally beat Medicare. Oh! Of course, the Biden campaign has scrambled to provide reasons for his awful performance. He had a cold. He felt bad. He had jet lag. He prepared too much. Trump never has this problem because no matter what happens, he'll always say, I won. Everybody says I won, and it wasn't even close. It was a tremendous victory. Biden clearly didn't prepare the right way. I mean, he did have all the facts. Boy, did he have facts. 400,000 people, four, I mean, 40, 40 million people would not have insurance because they have a pre existing condition. I've raised the number the amount of money for Pell Grants by another eight thousand dollars. So anybody making under seventy thousand dollars a year is gonna be able to get fifteen thousand dollars toward their tuition. As I said, fifteen million new jobs, eight hundred thousand manufacturing jobs of computer chips. We used to have forty percent of the market. Those fabs pay over a hundred thousand dollars. You don't need a college degree for them. And there's billions, about forty billion dollars already being invested and being built right now. Well guess what? We got it we got it down to 15, excuse me, $35 for insulin instead of $400. No more than $2,000 for every senior, no matter what they, how much prescription they need. You know what that did? That reduced the federal debt, debt by $160 billion over 10 years. Got all that? All right. Trump, your rebuttal? We have the greatest economy in the history of our country, and we have never done so well. Every, everybody was amazed by it. Other countries were copying us by the time we finished. So we did a great job. We got a lot of credit for the economy, a lot of credit for the military and no wars and so many other things. Everything was rocking good. He has not done a good job. He's done a poor job and inflation's killing our country. It is absolutely killing us. Look, we had the safest border in history. Now we have the worst border in history. There's never been anything like it. And people are dying all over the place, including the people that are coming up in Carolina. We had the best numbers ever, and we did. We were using all forms of energy, all forms, everything. And yet, during my four years, I had the best environmental numbers ever. The and whole country is exploding because of you, because they don't respect you, and they have to respect their president, and they don't respect you throughout the world. 
So all of these things, we're in a failing nation, but it's not going to be failing anymore. We're going to make it great again. The only reason I'm here is he's so bad as a president that I'm going to make America great again. We're going to make America great again. We're a failing nation right now. We're a seriously failing nation. And we're a failing nation because of him. His policies are so bad. Uh, his military policies are uh, insane. Okay, now, without rewinding, try to remember what Biden just said. I know I can't, and I'm not 81 years old. What I can remember is that Trump said that he was the best president ever with the best everything, and Biden was the worst president ever with the worst everything. Trump lied, but I remember everything he said. I don't remember anything Biden said, so Trump wins by default. What you need isn't facts. What you need is a convincing narrative, and facts only matter insofar as they help build that narrative. Now, what do you have to say for yourself, Joe? I don't walk as easy as I used to. I don't speak as smoothly as I used to. I don't deb debate as well as I used to. But I know what I do know. I know how to tell the truth. What? Where was this guy the night before? <sighs> God damn it. Okay, so we know one of two things. Either Biden is still okay in speeches but not debates, or he has good days and bad days. Either way, it doesn't inspire confidence. Now, Trump, he definitely has fewer bad days, but he's always been an idiot. Remember this? Right, and then I see the disinfectant, where it knocks it out in a minute, one minute. And is there a way we can do something like that uh, by injection inside or, or almost a cleaning? He also has a few senior moments of his own. We are a nation that just recently heard that Saudi Arabia and Russia will repeat do it. Oh. Now, at the end of the day, Trump held it together on debate night and Biden didn't. But is either one of these guys mentally fit to be president? Yes, both of them are. And it hasn't got anything to do with them but the job itself. You see, the president doesn't really have to do all that much. Under the Constitution, all he needs to personally do is command the military, nominate officers and judges, and deliver the State of the Union address. Literally everything else he does is either allowed or implied. Likewise, he can and does delegate almost all his tasks to his cabinet and the departments they head. And it doesn't even matter if the president is literally a corpse because then the vice president just takes over. At the end of the day, as long as you have the presence of mind to sign off on whatever your cabinet tells you to do, you can be president. Biden can definitely do that, and Trump basically did that all of his first term. At the end of the day, it all collapses back down to policy. Who has the better record and whom can we trust to preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution? Well, to anyone with a sober and honest assessment of the two presidents, the answer is quite obvious. Biden has always been an incrementalist and has governed in an incrementalist way. You know, healthcare, labor rights, green energy, gun control, infrastructure. Or I guess if you're a MAGA dipshit, he's done open borders, political persecution, but also he's soft on crime. He pulled out of Afghanistan, but not in a good way, but also he's going to start World War III. And one of these two narratives is real, but it depends on which reality you're living in. Trump, too, basically used the Republican Party's existing infrastructure because he had none of his own. He basically governed as an establishment Republican. But now, most of his old cabinet is gone, and most of the anti-Trump Republicans from his first term have either left Capitol Hill or fallen in line. Worse, all the crazy fucking shit he tried the first time without having to face any consequences has opened up a whole realm of possibilities for the previously institutional conservative right. With his newfound presidential immunity, thanks SCOTUS, there's really no telling what he might do with it. Who knows, he might make America great again, forever. What we do know is the conservative Trump-aligned Heritage Foundation has cooked up a plan called Project 2025, under which most merit-based federal workers would be replaced with partisan political appointees. Branches like the Department of Justice and FBI would come under partisan control, and the government would essentially become a Christo-fascist theocracy. And with all the competent administrators fired or imprisoned, sooner or later the economy would collapse, affecting all of us. Then again, that's just the worst case scenario we can imagine. If the Trump era has taught us anything, it's that we don't have a very good imagination. I mean, remember when the Heritage Foundation was rolling out things like Obamacare and Democrats were freaking out about the Muslim ban? Man, those were the good old days. 
And that's why Biden should drop out anyway. I said he's mentally competent enough to be president. But based on the debate performance, he's no longer capable of campaigning for president. Before the debate, Biden was in national polls running 0.2 points behind the convicted felon who saw his economy crash, try to do a coup, and promises to do another one. Now that guy is 2.3 points ahead nationally, his biggest lead since March. And concerns about Biden's age aren't something that just goes away. The problem is the heir apparent if Biden abdicates is... <sighs> Kamala Harris. And just to remind you what Kamala is like. And do we want to, to, to look at what November will bring and go on a course for America that is about a destruction of democracy? And that's Joe Biden. Neither Mike Pence person, is nowhere to be found in supporting Donald that Trump, stage. and that's why he has to look for. That's why he has to look for. Oh, oh, we're all doomed. The worst part about Kamala Harris is it's hard to get her out because, as I said four years ago, she's basically a diversity hire. You can't remove a candidate based on merit if she was never hired based on merit. But there are still a few solutions the Democratic Party could but probably won't pursue. The most effective would probably be Supreme Court reform. SCOTUS is currently at a historic low in terms of popularity. They've consistently paved the way for Trump to win re-election, whether by declining to disqualify him from the ballot for insurrection under the 14th Amendment, intentionally delaying judgments in his federal criminal trials, and now giving the president presumptive and effective immunity to do whatever he wants. Well, Joe Biden swore an oath to defend the Constitution. As head of the armed forces, he could use his newfound immunity to reform two of the most corrupt seats, bring the court to balance, and disqualify Trump under the 14th Amendment. Of course, he's not brave or bold enough to do that. So instead, the Democrats could decide to put the voters in the best position to save democracy manually. We really have three viable candidates. Michelle Obama is hugely popular, and though she's somehow even less qualified than Trump, running on no record at all is at this point a good thing. Maybe she'd do it if all of the Democratic Party called for a third Obama term, but as it stands, the two people who look ready are Gavin Newsom, tall, handsome, charismatic presidential, and Gretchen Whitmer, coming out of the swing state of Michigan. If Biden called for an open Democratic convention, I'd hope for a Newsom win because not only is he equal to or better than Trump at everything, he'd also make the resistance shitlips very angry that a white man is leapfrogging Kamala. And then they vote for him in November too. Most likely though, Biden's gonna pull a Ruth Bader Ginsburg and hold on until the end of our democracy. Even then, there's some ways he can project some strength. He should disrupt the news cycle by any means possible, preferably by publicly strong-arming Benjamin Netanyahu into a Middle East ceasefire. He can aggressively shift his messaging, labeling Trump and his Supreme Court cronies as traitors and an existential threat to the nation. Most importantly, he has to win the second debate. It's not likely. But Trump is a bad debater, and beating him is never impossible. For we plebs with no direct say, however, all we can do is vote blue no matter who. It's tired and cliche, but Democrats have to win. And they have to win over and over and over until Trump is dead or in prison and two of the Supreme Court justices have been replaced with liberals. Otherwise, democracy is gone and your utopian dreams of moderate compromise or communist revolution? Gone with it.